All right. Yeah. You can see me and everything. I can. Hi. Hi. I can see you. Okay. So I'll introduce myself. I'm Andy Larson. I transform my own life with superior nutrition. I have a Facebook page um, to prove it. And uh, I'm here with Sarah Quigley today, who's going to share with us her amazing transformation. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, Andy. So you sent me your before and after recently. Incredible. Thank you. It, you know, I feel great. I don't think I've ever felt better. Um, and it's amazing because a year ago, I think I was at a really low point in how I felt physically and mentally. And, you know, going into here, my early mid 40s, I thought, is this it? Like, is this the, the slow decline? Um, and I was really starting to wonder if this, this was fate. And I thought, well, you know, I saw what you had done and I thought, I wonder if that something like that is possible for me. And, um, I was kind of, uh, nervous to try it out. So I yeah. think so many of the pieces of nutritional advice we get, especially around get your protein and all of that, Mm -hmm. made me feel anxious about radically overhauling my eating. Yeah. And um, I thought, well, what's the worst that could happen? I try eating this way for a little while, and if it doesn't agree with me, I stop. Um, but I had other barriers, too. So, you know, I'm married, and I have two children. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I certainly didn't feel like it was my place to be pulling them along on this journey. I mean, they can eat however they want. Yeah. And certainly as a family, we've eaten, um, you know, in a certain way for a long time. And I always felt like it was fairly nutritious, but uh, it clearly wasn't working for me. Right. So let's, um, do you want to tell the people um, where you live and what you do for a living? Sure. So um, I live in San Francisco in the city. And um, but, you know, I'm probably everyone's interested to know uh, where I grew up, which is Litchfield, Minnesota with Andy. Uh, so known each other for a really long time. I remember we were in fourth grade together. Yeah. And, yeah. And um, but I've lived in San Francisco um, for about 17 years. And um, like I said, have a family mm -hmm. and um, I'm also a lactation consultant. Mm -hmm. So um, I, uh, a lot of people want to know, are you a nurse at a hospital? Where do you work? So I actually have a private practice and I do home visits for families. So go see them at their homes. And then also one of my side gigs is I do work in a hospital, but I just, um, I teach classes there. So mm -hmm. um, classes to expectant parents, um, about how to feed and care for their babies. Awesome. Do you want to mention the name of the business or do you want to just keep that separate? I'm fine mentioning it. So it's, it's called Sarah Quigley Lactation Support. So if you live in the Bay Area and you're looking for breastfeeding help, <laughs> you can find me. You never know. We're on the internet. So That's who right. knows who could be watching this. So thought we'd just get in a plug for that. Sure. No, I'll take every opportunity. Great. Um, how's the weather today? Um, so a little chilly for here, but, um, you know, having grown up in Minnesota, I would say practically balmy. It's uh, in the fifties. Yeah. It's been quite rainy. We're in the rainy season. Um, mm -hmm. but I have to say every single winter, I really enjoy the fact that I don't have to scrape off my windshield and <laughs> worry about black ice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Fifty sounds incredible. It's like 10 here or something. It's been really it's been really bad, but you know, we deal with it. So, so I'm in Minneapolis. Um, you're in San Francisco and, uh, we've known each other a long time, went to high school together. And so, um, so let's go back. Um, you said a year ago, things weren't going well with your health. Yeah. Um, so I was, um, really as heavy as I've ever been. Um, and I was having a lot of problems with one of my knees. In fact, it was, my knee was really swollen most of the time and mm -hmm. um, hurt to sometimes extend it. So I knew that was not normal. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I just had kind of this mounting worry that I was going to a really bad place. I could just kind of feel it. And also starting to feel like some of my own eating habits were really going off the rails. Like um, I was doing a lot of like late night bowls of cereal and kind of felt like I was getting into some bad patterns of like, it wasn't just one bowl. It would be several bowls. And I would even sometimes just wake up in the moonlight feeling sick. And I just thought, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, this, it, it was starting to feel like this is not normal. Um, I mean, because I've always had a large appetite and kind of been able to eat a lot without really putting on a lot of weight. But that didn't seem to be the case anymore. And also, I was eating yeah. in weight that I had not eaten when I was younger. I felt like I was really kind of self-medicating. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'd been, of course, following you and the information that you share on your page. And, you know, we've been messaging each other. And I was starting to feel like maybe it's time to do something radical. So you've tried, you tried changing your diet and like dieting prior to this. This wasn't your first try to like do something with for like weight loss or, or something like that, right? Yeah, no. I mean, in the past, like, I had lost a bunch of weight in my mid twenties with Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually I did it again, um, like around age 30 and then kind of had one more time where I really cycled through and lost a bunch of weight. And all, you know, all of those times it was calorie restriction, portion control, you know, all the standard ways that were advised to lose weight. And so mm -hmm. it would work for a little while and then it would come back on. Yep. And, uh, I mean, I would say probably the easiest time I had maintaining my weight was when my kids were very young, um, mm -hmm. just because I was chasing them around all the time um, mm -hmm. and uh, breastfeeding, which burns a lot of calories. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, tip from your lactation consultant, about 500 calories a day. Yeah, that's a that's a lot. Yeah. So you can eat a lot of extra food. Um Mm -hmm. And so then those um, days of having young children and breastfeeding and all that were behind me. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, for I think for a lot of moms out there, if you're listening to this, would recognize that the body shifts again. Um, now that you're not doing those things anymore and your kids are older and um, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more sedentary again. So mm -hmm. um, I think then at that point I needed to figure out something else. Yeah. And um, we're going to say something. Yeah. So can you tell me, um, tell me, so, like, what do you eat now? Like, what do you eat for breakfast? So I eat oatmeal for breakfast every single day. Um, and I have on it, well, different things. Like, really, whatever fruit that we have around, like the winter months, I really love like diced apple or diced pear cooked in with the oatmeal. So it gets a little soft and then nuts and always cinnamon. Um, Cause I used to put brown sugar on the oatmeal, but I find that cinnamon replaces that sweetness and really can't have it without cinnamon. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Same. So. Same here. Oatmeal, cinnamon, fruit every single day. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't change it. Yeah. Um, which I, I used to eat different types of breakfast. I'd have like eggs or pancakes or whatever I was making for the kids. But um, mm -hmm. I really found like oatmeal really works. I feel like that holds me through the morning. And I feel like it sets me up for the day to feel really good. Um, I do vary my lunch and dinner a bit more, although I will say I have a lot of favorites. Like, for example, today I just had one of my favorite lunches. I um, made uh, butternut squash soup. Um, just roast the butternut squash um, with onions. Mm -hmm. And then puree that up with some ginger and some Indian spices. I really like those flavors. You know, the whole thing is made without any um, added oils. Um, and so I had that. And then I had on the side a uh, whole grain pita bread with hummus. Excellent. That yeah. sounds really good. It's really good. That's that's often my go-to lunch because in my um, my lactation practice, I'm often on the go because I'm driving to people's homes and I very frequently eat lunch in my car and so like that's a, I have a thermos of soup and then I'll have the pita and the hummus there and that's a very satisfying lunch that's easy to pack and um 
eat on the go. So that's, I mean, that's one thing I would share with people if you're thinking, well, you know, this all sounds great, but it could be a lot of work or it could be really complicated. I don't mm-hmm. think it has to be like, I make very large batches of soup. I freeze them and then I just have them, you know, when I need them. Excellent. And they're, yeah. And they're not complicated to make. Um, so even I think someone who doesn't have a lot of cooking experience could be making these kinds of things just to take the time and learn how to do it. Um, and then for my dinners, it'll vary, but, um, you know, one great thing about changing my eating habits is my family, even though they don't eat exactly the same way I do, they've been really, really supportive. So for example, my husband's been great about trying out new recipes. Like sometimes he'll make like, um, like a noodle dish that has in it some greens and mushrooms and, um, like, uh, garlic and ginger and those are a lot of the flavors that he likes cooking with anyway so Mm -hmm. he'll make a lot of dishes like that or we'll do um you know mexican is a favorite around here so really easy to adapt that to be um more plant-based yeah like tacos and enchiladas definitely Mm yeah and everybody likes mexican food and you can just make it in a healthier way exactly you know i found that that's really easy to do and I always try to have on hand in the fridge, like, um, some cooked brown rice and some steamed greens. Mm-hmm. And that's like, especially for me to be able to have more greens in my diet. Cause you know, you're always talking about it and you had a video a while back. It was, you know, well, if greens are so great for us, then why aren't we eating them all the time? And that really hit home for me. So I often will just buy like a bag of pre-washed, pre-cut collard greens or kale, um, or like a blend at the supermarket and then I just mm-hmm. steam steam those on the stovetop or I microwave them mm-hmm. and then I just grab a bunch of those you know and I throw that into a bowl with some brown rice and top it with beans or tofu and um you know it's a pretty complete meal I add on that like some salsa or something to make it more flavorful so you're giving um, yeah. some great you're giving some great suggestions for easy to make and really good and these and let me guess, you're full from what you eat and you're not like snacky because this is some hearty stuff you're, you're eating, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's probably been one of my favorite things about eating this way is how good I feel, of course, after I eat, but then how I'm really satisfied for mm-hmm. hours. And, yeah. you know, I think that's a huge um, piece of making this sustainable and also um i think really impacts mental health when is when i was eating the old ways and you know i was you talk about standard american diet right um and i was always eating plenty of fruits and vegetables and i thought that that meant i was eating healthy but i was eating a lot of really highly caloric highly salted things i was very heavy on the dairy and yep. what i would find is that the, those meals actually would not hold me very well. I, I did need to snack. I was often really kind of trying to push through some pretty significant hunger to make it to the next meal. Mm-hmm. And I was really pleasantly surprised to find like, wow, I have like my bowl of oatmeal and fruit in the morning and I'm really set until lunchtime and I'm really not thinking about food. Um, yeah, you're smiling because you know what that's like that the kind of the the mental real estate of you know that food can take up when you're really not eating the way your body probably needs you to right now i'm just glad to hear it because it's nice to hear another person say it because you know it just reaffirms the fact that when you're eating high foods with high amount of nutrients high fiber high water content you're getting full and, um, and, uh, it, it works. So I'm glad to hear, glad to hear all that. Yeah. Um, it's been great. You know, I don't think we mentioned it yet. Um, do you want to say the number on the scale that you or the, no, the amount that you've lost or do we want to? No, I can say, say it. Yeah. I've lost 48 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm five foot 10, so I'm fairly tall. Yeah. And several people have said to me, you lost that much weight. I didn't even think you had that much weight to lose. And I told them, well, you can hide a lot of weight on a taller frame. Um, 
And, you know, I guess that's a plus in some ways, but um, Mm -hmm. I think that's really surprised a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And also that, that knee pain I had, it's totally gone. It's, it did take a few months. Um, and I think the weight loss was part of it, but I, I, what I'm thinking is probably just the day-to-day strain on that joint was really aggravating mm-hmm. um, that knee. Cause I had gone to, um, a, a doctor about it who started talking about like cortisone injections and the possibility of surgery down the road. And I just thought, really, I'm so young. Is it really, is that, is that where I'm headed? Um, so you didn't, was, you didn't want to, sorry, you didn't want to throw in the towel at, at age 42 or whatever and, and have to do all, knee surgery and all this stuff that it's not necessary, right? It's, it's not necessary. In fact, I went running yesterday with my husband. So, um, which is something I didn't think that I was going to be able to do again either because I had been a runner off and on um, throughout my life. And um, yeah. A few years ago, it actually like completed a 10K and been, you know, oh, okay. pretty regularly running and um, had injured myself and hadn't really been able to get back out there since and was starting to think maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just because mm-hmm. I've heard people say that, well, once you're past 40, maybe you can't run anymore. Um, and I don't believe that anymore. No, no. 40 so, is so oh. now. I remember thinking as a kid how old that was going to be. And yeah. you're really only as old as how how well you take care of yourself, you know, um, as you're demonstrating right now. Yeah, So it's so true. So did this take like a year to lose the almost 50 pounds or how long did this take you? So um, I started doing this right after Valentine's Day. So it's been about 10 months. All right. Yeah. And the Valentine's Day piece of it was significant. And maybe this is I mean, because I think a lot of people would relate to this kind of that moment where you feel like, OK, enough. Um, I actually went out um, for a, on a date with my husband and um, we got dressed up and I put on my my dressy coat, which I don't wear very often, more for special occasions. And mm-hmm. it was tight in the shoulders. Now, I think most of us could relate to like, you gain some weight and your clothing gets tight in the waist. Mm -hmm. But when it's tight in the shoulders, that's when you know you've really put on a lot of weight. And I just thought, oh no, I can't believe this. Like, (laughs) and Mm -hmm. I guess that's when I had a moment of, I thought, no, I, yeah, I'm turning this around right now. Yeah, so that was kind of your, I don't know. That was your that was your big moment of realization was the was the coat. I think it was actually. I mean, it, I think it was a number of things building up, but I think I put on that coat and I just felt so unhappy with that feeling and I'd actually had that a couple of months before because I was in my sister-in-law's wedding. I was a bridesmaid mm-hmm. and I just stuffed myself into that dress. I was so uncomfortable the whole night. I was just ugh, really unhappy. Um, yeah. and I felt like, yeah, I, I know, I know what I need to do something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how hard was it when you got started the first maybe week or two? How, how hard was it? You know, it's such a great question. Um, because I know so many people have commented to me, like, I don't think I could do what you did. I don't have that kind of willpower. I'm not organized enough or I'm not a good enough cook. Um, I mean, I think that, I think what it took was, it, it wasn't that it was so difficult to say, cook different foods or even to like plan ahead with my meals a little bit more. I think it was the whole shifting of my mindset of this is not about foods that I'm not allowed to eat or a way that I'm depriving myself. This Mm -hmm. is me choosing foods that will nourish me and heal me. And that it's my responsibility to make that choice every single day with every single thing that I eat. So I think what I had to do, that was probably the biggest shift for me, was the self-talk, was just, okay, 
you know, you could see here, you could have a cookie or you could, um, cookies were a big one, or you could have a big bowl of buttered popcorn. I used to eat a lot of that. And I thought there's nobody stopping you from eating those things now, but after you eat those, how are you going to feel, you know, physically, but more importantly, I think how, what's your self-esteem going to be like? And I had to keep reminding myself, eating those things is not going to help you. Um, and that you have the choice to have something else. That's awesome. Or, thank you. Yeah. But it, that was hard work of having to say that to myself over and over and over again, you're choosing something else. And sometimes the choice was to not eat, which was probably the hardest because I really loved my 10 p.m. bowl of cereal <laughs> or bowls of cereal. And so really it was, to, you know, reminding myself, you're not hungry right now. This isn't anything you need. And maybe even starting to examine, well, what, what are you trying to fulfill here? What feels like it's missing from your life and that you have such a strong urge to have this? What do you need instead? Those are hard questions. Those are really hard questions. I had to go deep. <laughs> Instead of just filling that sad hole with Captain Crunch. Yep. And I think actually what I ultimately concluded with that, I was eating because I was lonely. Which I don't, I probably wouldn't strike most people as a lonely person. You know, I have a great family. I have an awesome circle of friends. Um, my career um, requires me to be very social and outgoing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it got to be the end of the day. And sometimes I was just sort of exhausted. And I don't know, maybe trying to look for some other kind of connection. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it became more things like, well, you know, why don't you read something interesting or go talk to your husband or just go to a bed? <laughs> um. And so I think that's something I still, I still struggle with that sometimes. Thanks for sharing that. I think it helps other people who are in similar, you know, in similar situations. So, yeah. Absolutely. So I'm kind of jumping around here, but um, do you want to tell the people about like, so would you say if you had to name what you're doing, do you have a name for it or do you not even really have, do you not really think about it like that? Like mm -hmm. a style of eating? Yeah. I mean, um, I think for myself, I would say it's nutritarian, but when I'm explaining it to someone else who's interested, I would tell them, um, you know, I'm vegan or that I, I follow a plant-based diet and I focus on, um, minimizing oil, sugar, and salt. Excellent. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Usually I say vegan, um, but it, it often leads to a conversation with people about how, you know, you could be a junk food vegan, right? You know, right. potato chips and Coca-Cola are vegan technically. Um, right. so I think that's been interesting to talk with people about because a lot of times I think they're really curious of wanting mm -hmm. to know well what are you eating and how are you figuring this out so um that's probably what i go to most of all and you know at first when i started i was still eating a little bit of meat and fish and i actually found out i really didn't want it um right. and that i feel really fine without it mm -hmm. um so that's that's kind of what i found that works for me and i'm really fortunate um with where i live in san francisco um mm -hmm. There are a ton of vegan options. Um, it's really yeah. not difficult to find uh, food. I would say the more difficult piece of it, though, is finding food that's also low in oil, salt, and sugar. Definitely. Yeah. Even in California, going out to eat is, is still, you have to navigate that, right? Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, that's one thing um, my family and I really do enjoy restaurants because there are so many amazing restaurants here. Um, so really for me, that's like, um, I think a treat. So if we are going out, I just, I focus on getting the vegan option and, um, I enjoy it 
and don't worry so much about you know my intake especially of the oil and salt that might be in the restaurant meal um and i know you know you've talked about how you avoid restaurants or really don't eat at them at all um and i kind of feel like i can have you know have that be a part of my life and that there's there's a balance there and that works for me so yeah um, i'm happy with that in fact i just went out last night to a really incredible um middle eastern restaurant that had about half the items on the menu were vegan and it was just delicious. Mm-hmm. What did you get? So um, I got cauliflower soup to start. It was a cauliflower lemon soup. It was beautifully seasoned. And mm-hmm. then um, for the, it was like a, a three course meal that you could get. I got a um, stuffed beets as the middle course. And they've wow. stuck with like this almond paste and um, also really strong notes of lemon in it. It was, oh. That's what I would go back and get. I'd get like two of those plates. And then I got um, for my main course, it's a traditional Middle Eastern dish with lentils and um, seasoned rice. And then this had on top of it, roasted tofu and butternut squash and Brussels sprouts. Wow. Yeah. That sounds incredible. It was incredible. Yeah, actually the chef came over, or the owner of the restaurant um, came over and talked to us and we told him how much we had enjoyed the meal. He's from Yemen and he said... You know, I we said especially appreciative of all the vegan options on the menu, and he said that that's how he and his family eat about seventy percent of the time. Wow. Yeah. So the nice thing about all these non-American cuisines is they all just naturally have vegetables, beans, potatoes, rice, and if they're not plant, well, they are plant-based. Sometimes they have meat, and sometimes they don't. And dairy depends, but yeah. What I'm getting at is, you know, look at all the African, you know, Asian, South American. You can easily get, you know, this the kind of food that you like without, you know, meat on it if if you don't if you don't want that. Um, yeah, I think it's actually fairly easy. Also, I'd put in there Japanese. Japanese cuisine lends itself very very well to this kind of eating, mm-hmm. um, especially because they don't really do a lot of dairy, and then um, Indian as well. Yeah, I've had I some pretty Indian. incredible. Yeah, me too. I've had some incredible Indian meals. Um, so, yeah, I think it, all of that is very, uh, very adaptable. Definitely. Yeah. So, because people are always thinking, okay, so what do I got to give up, and what, how is this going to be difficult, and and um, I can't go out to eat, and and you know I can't eat my favorite thing anymore. So, um, it, that's not true, right? Absolutely not true. In fact, I think a great example of that is, well, of course, the restaurants, but also probably my favorite thing of all to have every day is hot chocolate. Um, I'll drink it in the summer. It doesn't get that hot here, but um, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I love hot chocolate so much. And of course, I used to make it with whole milk and sugar and often would put whipped cream on top of it. Mm-hmm. And now I make it with oat milk and um, a little bit of uh, maple syrup to sweeten it and then um, just cocoa powder and vanilla okay it's super satisfying it's exactly what I want because someone actually was saying that to me the other day oh you're vegan so it means you don't have chocolate I said oh I have chocolate (laughs) yeah chocolate well chocolate is vegan right I mean why wouldn't it be yeah. Well, I guess he was thinking about milk chocolate, and it is true that if you're buying like, bars of chocolate or chocolate chips, you want to look at the ingredients to see um, yeah. if there's milk in there. And but some some brands don't have any dairy in them. Um, yeah, and dark chocolate doesn't. Well, it's milk chocolate that has that has the the dairy. So. Right, and sometimes a bittersweet chocolate will have it, but okay, but. I mean, I found like to just continue having my favorite thing, hot chocolate, no problem. Great. And you don't go off the rails and have a whole sleeve of Oreos because you you had a hot chocolate? No, I really don't. Yeah. I think it's because for me, it's pretty much always been a ritual. Like either after lunch or after dinner, I have my Mm -hmm. cup of hot chocolate. I had it actually just a little while ago. Great. Sounds yeah. like you figured out what what works. So that's that's really good. So people who are watching, 
So if you go out to eat, you maybe just watch the menu a little closer. You have your hot chocolate. Um, and you're happy. Yeah. I think so, too. And I think also, like, having in the fridge a few easy things that you can just grab to put together a meal. I mean, especially, like, brown rice, beans, and greens. That's a very satisfying meal. Um, also like to point out, which I didn't even really think about, but has been a big deal, is um, how much money I've saved eating this way. Tell me a little more about that. Absolutely. Well, um, especially, you know, with my line of work, um, and I'm often kind of eating on the go, um, I was often stopping into Chipotle or... Um, you know, grabbing lunch, kind of some other kind of convenient spot for lunch. But mm -hmm. it wasn't really, you know, first of all, that adds up pretty quickly because one of those bowls at Chipotle, at least in the Bay Area, is a good $12. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they cost in Minnesota, but of course, everything is marked up out here. Um, and then um, I was also stopping a lot like at Starbucks because I was also drinking a ton of coffee which by the way I've noticed once I eliminated dairy I didn't really want coffee anymore I always thought I was this big caffeine addict which I, I was but I was more of a dairy addict I found when I would have coffee with almond milk or soy milk in it actually like tasted, it. tasted bad I didn't want it um so but where was I going with the, oh yeah saving the money so it wasn't shelling out for all of that but then also just groceries in general we were buying um rice and beans and greens those are really inexpensive items and um it's been amazing to me i think to just see that grocery bill every month significantly wow. smaller yep oh, i'm so happy to hear you say that because people think that it's more expensive and i'm not a vegan myself i do eat meat um but i don't eat any dairy um but I just wanted to get that out there. Um, yeah. But people do think I would consider myself plant-based because my God, I, I sure do eat a lot of fiber. Um, yeah. But people think it's going to be more expensive to do what you're doing. More expensive. than. Oh yeah. And I thought so too at first, but I thought, well, my health is important and I think that's a good investment. But yeah, I was totally wrong about that. I was also, I think, pretty wrong about the assumption, my own assumption, that this was going to be harder and more time consuming in terms of meal, meal preparation. I actually think it's simpler. Wow. Yeah, I, it really is. Um, just because so many of the things that I'm making, I can make in advance. And they're very um, quick and easy. I mean, like, you know, cooking a pot of brown rice is going to take the better part of an hour. But I make it two cups at a time and that's going to last me. I'm just pulling from that all week. Right. Two cups of dry rice. That That's a lot of rice when you cook it. It is. Yeah. So that'll last me all week. That's super simple. I, I do some canned beans, but I've also been doing more like um, dried beans in the slow cooker because that's even cheaper. Um, and then what I do is put them in jars and freeze them. Wow. So that's like shaved even more money off the grocery budget. And I think that's really important for people to know. Um, I think it was in the, well, there's a new edition of the, the winter issue of um, the Forks Over Knives magazine. You can get those like at the grocery store. Um, but the fall edition had this great section. It was about um, eating on a budget. It was like, I think, eating for $50 for the whole week. Mm-hmm. Although one thing it didn't say was how many people you were serving, but it looked like you'd probably be serving like two, about two people, but they had some delicious recipes in there. And I loved how, you know, the shopping list included several bags of deep beans, you know, a large bag of potatoes, mm -hmm. lots of fruits and veggies. And I thought this is really, I think the kind of information that people need is to see, okay, here's what you would actually buy and here's how you could make it. If you can get your hands on that copy of the Fall Forks Over Knives magazine, that was a great um, story that they had. Good suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so where do you, do you shop in a particular grocery store or? 
So I kind of rotate around to a couple of different places. Um, I'm out here in California where we have a lot of um, Safeway grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Um, It's one of the most common chains out here. And it's a pretty standard grocery store. So I shop at Safeway quite a lot. I go to Trader Joe's quite a bit. Um, There's also a grocery store um, just down the street from me called Grocery Outlet. Um, And it might be more of like kind of like Aldi. Okay. Actually, our version of that out here. Like, so they'll have like discount kind of bulk discount items, but they might not have like absolutely everything you need. Okay. Um, So, yeah, I shop a few different places, but I don't um, like I don't really go to Whole Foods. I don't really um, buy a lot of expensive products. Mm -hmm. Um, I do buy organic sometimes. um, Yeah. But, you know, I think that's also important for people to know is that I don't think you need to be shopping at like a really high end store to eat. like Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, let's face it, there's most of the people in this country are, you know, don't have a lot of savings and don't are kind of living check to check most, you know, so um, we don't want that to be a barrier either. Any income can eat rice, beans, you know, these kind of potatoes. I mean, these are the cheapest foods, right? But Yeah. So I don't think people are seeing it that way yet. But but yeah, thanks for um, thanks for explaining that as well. Yeah, well, I think that's a really important piece of it. And I think that. Well, my hope is that people will hear more of these kinds of stories and be willing to try this for themselves. Because I think so much of this is about getting out of old habits. Absolutely. You're you're breaking down every single excuse. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of a tough love person. Um, and so you're breaking down every excuse in the book that I hear. I'm too busy. I have a family. They eat differently than me. My God, you have a job where you're in the car all the time. And what do you do? You just bring your lunch every every day? Yeah, and I actually find that that reduces my stress because then I'm not trying to run out and buy something in the middle of the day. Because some days I might actually only have about 15 minutes where I'm stopped in my car where I could eat my lunch, which it's not ideal, but um, <laughs> sometimes that's how it goes. And so you're eating in your car. Um, I mean, just due to necessity because of your job and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. I always kind of wonder what people do that like UPS drivers or something. I don't know. Or like what you're doing running around. But um, right. I actually love it because it's my downtime. (laughs) Um, And, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Like um, that's another thing that's really kept me going is like um, the, uh, the exam room the uh the physicians committee podcast i have found mm-hmm. to be really interesting and really informative and kind of keeps me inspired um i listen to it every week that's great chuck yeah. carroll weight, loss weight loss champion, champion. <laughs> yeah i know yeah. i listen to it too I, I really like it i like neil bernard and i like his the the dietitians that he has come on and it's very um just really down to earth too you know um they just kind of explain nutrition so that any person can kind of relate to it and understand it i i I think it's a really awesome podcast i like it too yeah it's great kind of keeps you you know keeps i don't want to say keeps you motivated because you're already motivated but you know it's just it's nice to hear the and i will hear i'll listen to somebody talk about diabetes or heart disease or you know, fiber or whatever they want, they could talk, I could listen to them talk about it many, many different times. So I'm, I'm just kind of a nerd for nutrition now. I, it sounds like you yeah. kind of are as well. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've even wondered, like, maybe how could I weave that into what I'm doing now? Because I'm really on the front lines of early nutrition. And that's, I think that's actually been another motivator for me um, in eating this way. I actually had that thought before. It's like, you know, I'm, working so hard to help parents feed their babies as much breast milk as possible, Mm -hmm. uh, which of course we know is the optimal nutrition. And yet here I am running around 
well, look at what I'm putting in my body. Like, what's wrong with this picture here? Like, how am I really living by example? And I, I know that might sound like kind of a stretch to some people, but to me, it really felt hypocritical. But really, that's what I am. I'm a nutritionist for babies, essentially. Um, yes. Yeah. And so if I can't even get my own, you know, my own house in order, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Absolutely. Anyone? Thank you for bringing that up. That's such a great point. You're right. Anyone that's on the front lines of healthcare, it's their responsibility to lead by example. I totally agree. That's a that's a that's an excellent point. Yeah, it, yeah. it really yeah, it took me a while to get honest about that. I mean, but like that's you know, what it says on my badge at the hospital is health educator. It's like, well, then I better be healthy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so you are saving money. You lost weight. You, you probably have no more extra weight to lose at this point. I don't think so. I mean, unless... I do lose a little more. I would say the last 15 pounds or so have come off more slowly. Yeah. So I'm just kind of seeing where my body settles, but it it feels like I'm in a good place. So I'm not kind of doing anything aggressive about it. Yeah. And I don't know that weight loss was deaf. It's not even really kind of the biggest thing anymore, right? It's you're, you're, you're just feeding your body and being healthy and the, it can kind of shake out where it neat, where it wants to now. Right. Kind of a thing. Yeah. I would say so. Like at first, I think I did have a goal in mind, but now I I feel like what's more important is how do I feel on a day-to-day basis? And I also think I really trust myself to maintain this level of health and that, yeah, my body will just follow suit wherever it needs to be. So I don't worry so much about a specific number. Mm -hmm. And that's really freeing because I think And I think a lot of people would relate to this. I know I spent a lot of mental energy thinking about how unhappy I was with where I was at, you know, 40 plus pounds ago and where I wanted to be and kind of trying to imagine what that would look like. And, you know, now that I'm here, I can think about other things. Yeah. Move on to other things because there's always something to work on. There's always something to work on, but I, I will say that also I noticed like as I got my body in order, I've also gotten my mind in order. I think I'm much more confident. I think I've been more willing to speak up um, for myself and been feeling more courageous. I think um, my career has definitely benefited. I think I'm better at my job because of this. And it, it's kind of, I guess the image I have in my head is, you know, the game Connect Four when the pieces just kind of fall down in the slots, I feel like it's when I kind of had that bottom row was all like nutrition. When that was all in line, everything else just seemed to kind of fall in into place. That's great. I, think- I can to- I can totally relate to that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so awesome. I'm so, so you're enjoying so much. Your life is so much better. It's so much better. And it's, it's interesting because if you talked to me a year ago, I would have told you I have a great life. It's not like it was that bad, but, <laughs> um, you know, I knew that there were things that could be better. Um, yeah. But, and, um, but I think, you know, it's kind of like if you've been sick, like whether you get a bad cold or the flu or something, and then you finally recover from it. And then you remember like, oh yeah, this is what it's like to feel really normal again, that, that relief I feel like that all the time now. That's great. Yeah. I like what you said er at the beginning of the conversation about how you wouldn't want to go back and eat that old way anymore because you're you don't want to feel gross. Like yeah. that's the mo that's enough motivation right there is just knowing kind of what I think that way too. I always go, oh no. I see people eating stuff at work and I go. Ooh, no, I don't care to be depressed for the rest of the day if I if I hate that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I get to the point where I don't even want it anymore. In fact, this happened last week. I um, actually was doing a, a home visit with some new parents. And um, 
the dad brought out a plate of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies and they looked perfect, you know? And I said, Oh, the, you know, those look wonderful. Um, and I'm vegan. Um, yeah. And he said, Oh, okay, no problem. And the mom said, I hope you don't mind if I have one. And I said, of course not, you know, enjoy. But yeah. I didn't even, you know, I didn't want them. That's great. Yeah. And so also cool. they they didn't question it. Nobody was offended. Yeah. It's like that's not right. even a big deal. Like, because I think that's something a lot of people worry about is if somebody offers you food that you don't eat anymore, are yeah. you going to be insulting them or letting them down if you say no? But I always think about it like, well, if you have an allergy, you're not going to just go eat walnuts and then, you know, get out your EpiPen. And of course, if I ate the chocolate chip cookie, it's not like it's going to make me sick. I'm not going to have an allergic reaction, but it's more just the point of, yeah, I don't eat that anymore. Right. That's just not yeah. something I put in my body. And I have the right to say that. And people respect that. I really have not found that anyone has pressured me or anything like that, which I worried about. And kind of like how I would look, I think. I mean, and I know you've talked about that before as well, but especially I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. I'm a yes, I'm a yes person. So, <laughs> but, you know, I think in saying no to the cookies, it's yes to me. I love it. That's like the title of your next book right there. I was going to say, as it came out of my mouth, yeah, it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's true. I think, yeah, you have to say yes to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This flowed, you flowed so naturally right into the peer pressure thing. I, I definitely wanted to talk about that yeah. too. Um, Cause I think people are afraid of that. So, Oh, speaking of which, so it's holidays now. So do you want to tell me about what you did for Thanksgiving and what you kind of are thinking for around Christmas for the people that are going, well, what am I going to do on Christmas? Right. Yeah. So for Thanksgiving, um, had it at home with my family and, um, Everyone wanted a turkey or something like that. Actually, they ended up making some Cornish hens, which we've made in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, it was really just making all of our favorite side dishes. And some of them were already vegan. Like there's this sweet potato dish that is a favorite on my husband's side of the family. Um, yeah. That's, that's plant-based or you can make it plant-based. Otherwise, it'd have butter in it. Um, yeah. And... Um, then I made this really incredible stuffing, um, which had tempeh sausage. So for those people wondering what's tempeh, it's a, it's a soy product. And you can crumble it up and added a bunch of seasonings to it. And then yeah. made it with the bread stuffing. And it was absolutely delicious. Like everybody loved it. Um, and so, yeah, also had mashed potatoes. We made both vegan and um, dairy-based mashed potatoes. Okay. And um, green beans. And then, you know, it was interesting because, so, they made a regular pumpkin pie. I kids and my husband did. Yeah. And I made, this, I made this vegan cake, but I actually really, I, tr I had a couple of slices and I thought, I don't even really like this. It didn't really taste like much of anything to me. It was kind of boring. So, I threw the rest of it away. Okay. I mean, I'll tell you, if that's not a transformation, I don't know what is me throwing cake away. <laughs> You've said so many things. I, I'm so happy. It, I, I, I love it. I'm so glad people are, are hearing all this because they can't even imagine um, throwing away cake. And there you so here right. you are. You, you could. This could happen to you. Um, so then for Christmas, I'm actually not even sure what our plans will be. I mean, I'm sure we'll plan some type of nice meal. Um, and, you know, meat may very well be part of that, um, I would expect. And then again, whatever side dishes we want. So I'm really not worried about that. But actually right around the corner, two weeks after Christmas is my birthday. And I'm still not sure what I want. Um, I'm at kind of a funny place right now with desserts and with sugar and that. Yeah. I feel like every time I have them, the next day, I I just look like I've aged a few years. Like, just just for a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, which, I mean, 
maybe sometimes that's the price I pay and that's fine. But I sort of also wonder, well, what, what is that actually doing to me? Like, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I've also found I've just lost my taste for the kind of the quantity of, um, full on sugar dessert I used to eat. Like there's this amazing, um, ice cream shop, um, that we like to go to and they have, um, non-dairy ice creams that are quite good. Mm-hmm. The last time we went and got that, I actually didn't want to finish it. It was too much sugar. Mm-hmm. So you, you got a sweet tooth. Very much so. Would you say that's your, me too. Totally. So yeah. would you say that's your, that was kind of your biggest like Achilles heel was the, was sugar? I would say so, but um, I think for me, what helped me to really dial back the sugar was not eating dairy. Because I think for me, the combination of dairy and sugar is, you may as well just give me some heroin. Exactly. Yeah. And That's the dairy it. already has sugar in it. Right. So especially something like um, cookies, cake, anything slathered in frosting. Yep. I'm just, yeah, I'm gone. I'm, yep. Put a fork in me. Um, <laughs> same <laughs> yeah exactly yep and so now you're not you're not taking the cookie when it's offered to you you're throwing away the cake so this is really uh this is really going in a good direction here it is really going in a good direction and it's taken a while like I would say this is probably been the most gradual part of this process for me mm-hmm. um is dialing that back and yeah. I did have a little backslide this month with some um, some Earth's Balance <laughs> vegan butter. Yeah, I know what that is. Right, like actually that makes a really, really good frosting. So. Oh, okay. That's your yeah. kind of imitation butter. Yeah, so like actually um, last weekend at my kid's school, they have this, um, it's called Winterfest. Uh Um, So they've got all these different activities like games and um, gingerbread house making and a book fair and there's a bake sale and I always volunteer at the bake sale. So I brought some cupcakes and I had one and kind of had that that feeling of like a little gross afterward, even though it was really good. Yep. Yeah. So the the good the feeling you get from eating this good food most of, almost all the time, that's, that's the reward right there is you, you feel good. Yeah. So there it is. Yeah, there it is. And you know, um, I don't know if you've experienced this, but like, I'll just have this happen to me, not every day, but regularly enough every few days where like I've been really focused on my work. I've had something else distracting me and I kind of, after I'm done and I sort of come up for air, sometimes I'll just have this reminder, like, and look at you, you feel good. You're healthy. You've got your eating under control. And just that reminder again of like, yeah, yeah, I got this. It's really reinforcing. It is really reinforcing. That's probably one of my favorite things is I'll just kind of come back to that in my brain um, you know, after I was thinking about something else for a while and I really, uh, I like that. That's great. So, um, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. And, um, it's, I'm just thrilled for you. Um, and, uh, your life was okay. Your life was good already, but it's great now. It's, it's it's so much better. So I would agree. Um, I don't think it's really been better. That is so I also like too that we're talk we're in our forties and we're talking to people about this. So you know, like you said, you caught it. You you were you were right on the edge there of going down that road of needing the niece replaced and maybe getting type two diabetes eventually and, and just going down and me too, you know. I did mine a little bit earlier, but, and yours was 10. I worked on this for five years and, um, yours, you've been doing this 10 months and you're, you're, uh, you're good now. It sounds like. So 
Yeah, I'm good. Well, and I mean, you know, I, I think like you, you know, you worked away steadily at it though. And, um, you know, also had a longer, I think you had a longer road based on where you were at the beginning. I did have a longer road. Yeah, but um, you know, you got there. And I mean, even if yeah. I were still, let's say I had a longer road too, I think I'd be very, I think very committed to continuing with this. So I think, you know, to someone, whether they've got like 20 pounds to lose or they've got 200, I mean, I think once you get in the groove with this and you really kind of figure out how this fits in your life, then you can do it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I think people are going to really find this helpful that are still that haven't made the decision yet to kind of um, do it. Um, I think this is going to give people a lot of, you gave out a lot of really good, easy things to make to, and, uh, and eat. And so, yeah, it was really helpful. So thank you so much for sharing. And uh, I'm going to see if I can try to figure out how to shut this thing off now. <laughs> All right. Well, well, you're welcome. And thanks for inviting me to talk about it. Absolutely. All, All right. right. Bye, Sarah. Bye-bye, Andy.